And he's literally like this at the screen door. Why? Why? Why are you doing this to me? Like going nuts, psychopath. Yo, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. So today, y'all, we are having pizza and wings. Right here we have the garlic parmesan and the lemon pepper wings from Wingstop and a fresh, delicious tub of ranch. And then, uh, of course, the atomic sauce. Right here, I have a meat lover's pizza. Quest, of course, the Quest brand. If you know, you know. Today, I'm gonna have a little story time. It's kind of like, uh, uh. But anyway, any who, any karoot or whatever, let's go ahead and get started because I am stwalving. Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless this meal, the hands that prepared it. May you provide for those going without. Heal, bless, protect, and provide for my BGA crew. In your precious name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Of course, we're going to start by taking a couple bites, and then we will get into the story time. Mm. The story time involves one of my exes. Mom, mm -hmm. would you like to try this pizza? Just a little tiny piece. Andale, Oh, this atomic sauce is extra hot today. Just put a little tiny piece in Okay. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, you guys. Let's start with the lemon pepper. My favorite. Oh, you guys. Oh, see, I'm salivating. I'm choking on my own saliva. I ordered them extra crispy and all flats. Let me know if you're team flats or team drums in the comments below. Put hashtag drums. Hashtag flat. All right, no ranch. Mm. <clears throat> mm. Practically ate the bone. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Get all those little crispies off the edge. Mm -hmm. Who else cleans their bones? Let me know. Okay. Now let's do some of this. Mm, we're gonna drown that bad boy. And then of course with the ranch. There we go, look, look at that, look at that. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god. Oh. I swear. I can never get tired of Wingstop. And the other day, I was actually going uh, to my old videos. And I had forgot that the whole reason why I had ever liked or tried Wingstop was because Mr. Sushers had told me my granddaughter had um, hooked it up for me to try Wingstop. And this is before like we got, you, you know, we knew each other or whatever. So thank you to you, Steven, you put me on these. Bomb. Mm. Oh, hold up. Get your ass back on there. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mmm, gum. No. Mmm. I have tried so many, like, low carb frozen pizzas. The Quest brand is my favorite. Mm-hmm. 
Now, I didn't say it was the best pizza on earth, but out of the low carb keto world, this is the best on the market. Okay. Mm hmm. I'm gonna get into the story time. So, there's an app that one of my friends told me about that lets you see who watches your IG. And I didn't believe that was real. And it lets you follow and unfollow like large numbers of people so you don't have to go one by one. You can just go select, you know, cause on IG you gotta go to the page, block them or remove them. Okay, do that, go to the next one, blah, blah, blah. This, on this app, you just do it all from the app, select everyone and it removes them. So, but anyway, I just noticed Mm. Mm hmm. Mm. Baby. Now that's what I call a well done wing. Wow. So, anyway, I was on the app. And guess who I see watching me? My stuff. Mm hmm. You guessed correct. My psychopath ex. To be honest with you, I didn't even know they knew that I had a, a YouTube or an IG. I didn't know they knew I was Big Eye Appetite. I mean, I remember back in the day before my channel took off, I had tried following him on Facebook as Big Eye Appetite. Hmm. But he never accepted me. I was like, dude, you caused so much hell in my life. And you don't want to add me? I don't even know what I was thinking, adding him. Mm hmm So I got shot down. Good, for my own good, right? Um, well, anyway, seeing him watch my, my IG or show up on the app... Mind you, I didn't even know he had it in IG. Just a Facebook. Um, it brought back so many memories. My heart goes out to all of you men and women that deal with psychotic um, significant others. You know what I mean? And... If you deal with DV, if you know what I'm talking about. Don't stay in that relationship. It is not worth it. I reached a point where I had got comfortable. with the A, B, U, S, E. And I was like, oh, you know, I never understood before. Like how people could stay with someone like that. I'd be like, damn, y'all dumb. And so I lived it myself. When you love someone blindly and so much, you always try to give them the benefit of the doubt. And that's what I did for too long. 
And it just brought back memories seeing him, you know, on there. It reminded me of one in particular situation. My close friends know about this story, but to those of you that don't, I feel, I wasn't going to talk about this. I've had people tell me in the past, talk about it. You know, you could be helping others. And I've never wanted to open up about this. Never wanted to share it. Because it's traumatic. But. I realize now that talking about it can bring awareness and help people, you know, get out of a situation like that. I remember he was sick, like with the cold. Mm. And we just, he would always like rent hotels and stuff for us to go, you know? Little getaways. And this time he was drinking like, um, like coding, like a cough syrup or coding and night quill, all these other things, right? And mind you, we had alcohol and liquor. So we go to the room. He's high on all that freaking like cold and flu medicine and then decides to want to drink. And automatically I'm like, bro, you sometimes get really weird when you're drinking. Like now top it off with um, those meds. I'm like, I don't want you to bust a Jeffrey Dahmer on my ass, you know? And I pass out and then you decide to off with her head. You know what I mean? Mm. He told me to shut the F up. Started being very aggressive verbally. And, um,. I started to get weirded out. And so, anyway, um, I don't know what happened or what he did. I can't really remember. But I felt very uncomfortable and I told him to stop drinking. Or I was going to leave. So, he didn't listen. I slowly started to pack my bag. And as I get up from the bed, he thought I was going to go to the door and he jokes to the door and is like blocking it. And I'm like, bro, calm down. I'm not leaving yet. Like, what am I supposed to do? Walk home? And at this point, when I saw him do that, I was like, oh, Lord, I'm in, I'm in some trouble. And mind you, I've been dating him from, for a while, but I know that he has a lot of like mental issues behavioral health like issues you know and i'm like oh my god please don't let me end up on id evidence or something i grew up watching those shows so honey i'm i'm alert you know and so at this point i was like i'm gonna leave my bag right here and make it seem like i'm still staying he moved and i was like i'm gonna go outside and then i'm gonna like call my sister my mom whatever so as soon as I start walking to the door, he gets up again and he pushes me. I bounce off the wall and he's blocking the door. And I'm like, dude, what the hell? And so anyway, I'm forcing him trying to leave, you know? And at this point, he didn't like, you know what I mean? Beat me up. But grab me like this and pin me towards the wall. I was like, you're not effing leaving. You're not definitely leaving. When I tell you that I thought I was going to die, literally that moment in just those couple seconds, I literally saw my life flash before my eyes. The scariest thing, you don't know what it feels like until you're in that situation. Mm. So at this point, I was like, just play it cool. So I start hugging him. Caressing him, like kissing, 
just anything to like try to get on his good side. Cause I'm like, I'm stuck in this hotel room. Like I'm, I'm done. So he sits back down. I sit on the opposite side. Obviously he's sitting closer to the door in case I want to leave. I'm scared. So I get on my phone and I start calling. And, and, and those, I don't know why I didn't text. I guess I wasn't like text, big on texting in those days, but I call my sister. My eldest sister, may she rest in peace. Um, I was like, hey, Shay, what are you doing? Nothing, me home. It's here with the kids, you know, small talk. And so, mind you, he's uh, white, so he doesn't speak. Well, not that white people don't speak Spanish, but I'm saying just for the context of what I'm saying next, we're going to say next, he didn't speak any Spanish. And so I started speaking in Spanish. I'm like, hey, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say it in English what I said in Spanish. I was like, hey, sis, he's drinking too much, very aggressive, scared for my life. I was kind of like coding it. I'm like, scared for my life. Can you come get me? And mind you, I don't remember. Yeah, I had already told my sister where we were going. I, that's the one thing you guys always tell people where you're going. And so... um my sister's like, oh, don't make, don't alert him. Mm. She was like, I'm on my way. Be safe. Be careful. I was like, I know. Immediately. Mind you, I said this to my sister within like a little 10 second period. And he immediately jumped. I was like, don't be speaking your effing Spanish in front of me. Who are you talking to? And I know you're talking in code. Blah, 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 blah. Don't be talking in that. Don't be speaking that Spanish in front of me. Like, that. And I was like, my sister said, calm down, calm down, calm down. Like, don't, don't aggravate him. La, da, 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 da. And I was like, oh no. I was like, you know I'm Spanish. Like, you know I'm Hispanic. I speak Spanish. And it's my sister, see? He's like, oh, well, just don't be speaking Spanish in front of me. I, I want to know what you're saying. I'm like, oh. So anyway, I told my sister, okay, sis, have a good night. I'll talk to you later. Whatever. I can't even recall everything. My memory from that point after that phone call to when my sister showed up was blank. I don't, no matter how much I try to remember, I don't remember if I lay down and like try to keep him calm. I do not remember what happened. I draw blanks every time I try to remember. I don't know if he might have gotten physical. I have no idea. I don't recall. And, but anyway, my sister ends up coming. And her, I don't know if, I think my mom was with her or my cousin. Someone was with my sister. I can't remember. And they're banging on the door. Do, 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 do. Open the door right now. And he's like scared at this point. He's like, oh, what the hell? Did he call the cops or whatever? <laughs> Nathan, come to the door, Nathan. So as soon as he gets, he, he didn't let me open the door. He's like pushing me away and looking through the thing. And he's like, it's your effing sister. You call the sister. And he's like going crazy pissed, you know, about to, he's going like, just like he wanted to hit me. I was like, bro, what the hell? Like, you know, and I'm, don't think that I'm just some little weak link. Like, I could scrap too. But it's it's hard when you're in that situation. Mind you, he's six, he's six two. I'm 5'8". So he towered over me. And not only that, you know, I was a lot smaller than I am now. And at the same time, even if I wanted to defend myself, like, it was hard. Because when you love someone so much, I, I, and I know it's hard to describe... Unless you live it and you've been through it, you will understand. Like, even though he felt those, like, malicious feelings at that moment, and I saw him to act like that towards me, I couldn't hate. I couldn't fight. Like, I didn't want to fight back. You know what I mean? Like, this is a person that I'm in love with. This is a person that I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with. You know what I mean? It's hard. And then I had been conditioned in... You know, to to feel like that was okay because it was other instances many times that it was similar, maybe not at a hotel, but similar situation, very controlling. 
I had to cut ties with all my friends. It even reached one point where he didn't want me to associate with my mom. And, and I'll get into that in just a bit. But anyway, he finally opened the door because my sister was like, I'm going to call the police and you're going to be arrested if you don't let my brother out. So he got scared. Let me go. And he just stood there with his arms crossed as I'm grabbing my stuff. My sister's like, oh, whoa, whoa. I'm reliving the moment. Sorry, guys. <laughs> my sister's like, you know, at the doorway holding it open. And he's just standing there like watching me go. He's like, I can't believe you. I can't believe this. Like guilt tripping me like I was in the wrong. And so my sister's like, shut up, shut the F up. You know, my sister's like, don't be talking to him like that. Mm. We leave. Thank the Lord. I don't care if you have known someone your whole life, if you just met them, or y'all been dating for a year, five years, 10 years, it does not matter if you are ever put in an uncomfortable situation where you do not consent or people are holding you against your will. Mind you, back then I didn't realize that that was, that's like holding hostage or whatever. But after that, and this is where the mind games come in, the psychopath of it. And I think... Uh, I want to say, could have been like three days later. Mm. Shows up to my house with a big thing of flowers. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Dummy here fell for it. Again. Uh, he loves me. He cares about me. He had a mistake. Me. Always making excuses, you know? Oh, you know, we all make mistakes. That's what I told myself. Mm. So anyway... Fast forward... Could have been a month or two later. <clears throat> he was going to start a new job. Um, um, we were out having dinner. Oh, sorry. This topic gets a little... Emotional, like, I thought it was over it, you know what I mean? Sorry, I didn't mean, to, I don't want to do this on camera. I really thought it was over it. It's been quite a few years. <clears throat> anyway, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. Um, he had, uh, he was going to start a new job. And he was like, I want to take a little trip to Payson for the weekend. I'm going to get us a nice hotel out there. We'll drink, have fun, and all this, right? So I agreed. I'm like, yeah. It's during the winter time, and the roads get very icy, black ice, and it snows a lot up in northern Arizona. So I go home, I'm excited, and I start packing a bag, because he's like, oh, I already have everything like set up, you know? Um, without even, like, I, I don't know, talking to me about it first. So he just, like, surprised me with it. <clears throat> but anyway, that was him, always surprising me with something. So I get home, and I'm like, Mom's like, where are you going? And I'm like, oh, I'm, you know, he rented a hotel in Payson. And we're going to go. Mom's like, um, mijo, I don't have a good feeling about this. I don't want you going so far away from home because it's like two hours. Considering his reputation, you know? She's like, I don't feel comfortable you going to the middle of the freaking woods with him. 
And especially when there's a lot of ice and snow and all that, something can happen to you. Mom was like, just, I know you're a, a grown man and I don't want to tell you what to do. She's like, but please take my advice. I don't feel comfortable you going. And I thought about, I was like, oh no, I'll be fine. I'll be fine justifying it, you know? And as I'm packing, I start thinking about it. And I remember how I felt that day in the hotel. And I'm like, you know what? It's not a good idea. So I told him and I said, hey, babe, I'm so sorry. Please don't be mad at me. I said, but I don't feel comfortable going all the way to Payson. And he, mind you, we're in my mom's house. Flips out. It's like 10 p.m. at night. We were at our, our Applebee's previously and when he had told me the news and we had went back to my house to pack and all that and my mom and my stepdad are in the room, you know what I mean? Already in their pajamas, ready to go to bed. When I'm telling my mom and I went and told him, don't you know he barges all the way to my mom's room? No respect, just barges open the door. And he's like, your son is a grown ass man. You need to let him live his own life. And he needs to, you, and then he looks at me and he goes, you need to stop circling off your mama's pinky. You need to stop circling off your mama's pinky. You know what I mean? And I was like, hey, what the F? I was like, don't be disrespecting my mom. My mom's like, my mom's like, hey, can you get, get out of my room? Uh, let me put my robe on and I'll go out and speak to you in a minute. I'm in my pajamas. Can you please step out of my room? Let me put my robe on and I will come out and speak to you. And he's like, I don't even remember. And I remember we went to the living room. And I was like, dude, why are you disrespecting my mom? Like, what the hell? So my mom comes out. And my mom was like, no. And I gave my mom the eyes, like, tell him for me, I'm not going. I gave her that look. So my mom was like, no, I'm sorry, mijo. Nathan's not going to be able to go. Mm -mm. The roads to Payson right now are very dangerous with the black ice and all that. No, I'm sorry. And he's like, I already have this all set up. Da -da 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 -da. Now I gotta put in a refund and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm sorry. You know, there's nothing I can do. That's not our problem. Nathan already expressed to you that he's uncomfortable. And I'm telling you that I'm uncomfortable. And he's like, F you. And this and that. And as soon as he said F you, I literally got in front of him. Mind you, he's like super tall. I start pushing him and he's walking backwards towards the my door, my front door. And I'm pushing him and pushing him. I'm like, get the F out. Get the F out. Don't you ever disrespect my mom. Don't you ever disrespect my mom. And so I push him all the way out until he was outside. And I slammed the screen door right in front of his face. And he's literally like this at the screen door. Why? Why? Why are you doing this to me? Like going nuts, psychopath. And I was like, dude, are you seriously asking me why? Do you not hear yourself? Do you not see your actions? Ah! Going crazy outside. I'm like, you're going to wake my neighbors up. Get out of here. I'm calling the police. Honestly, that was the last straw for me. And I don't know what came over me, but I ended it right then and there. And I remember he called me, stalked me, chased me, everything. And so I was just like... No, it's not going to happen. So what I did is I had everything that he had ever bought me up. A ring, um, uh, a whole bunch of gifts. A whole bunch of gifts that he had bought me. And this was like maybe two, three months later because I was so devastated that we, I had ended it because I still loved him no matter what. You know what I mean? And that's the that's the hard thing about being in a situation like that. And um, DV, um, you know, with your partner being DV. Uh, against you and you know you tend to start believing that that's the norm and that's okay and oh they love me they just had a mistake or he lost his temper or I did something wrong I pissed him off you know maybe next time I'll, I'll be better I'll be nicer I'll be more considerate and just listen to me if those of you that are experiencing that and you're watching this like it is not your fault it is not anything that you've done. It is the other person. 
And if that is what you're going through, you need to get out of there. Because right now you have your life. But all it takes is one moment, one fit of rage. And then your family's mourning, you're, you're, you're passing. You know what I mean? Don't be a statistic. Don't be one of those people. Get out of that situation. There are other people out there that will love, cherish, and protect you, not hurt you. Love shouldn't hurt. Love, love should be amazing and beautiful. You know what I mean? And I'm so happy that I'm using my platform to talk about this right now because this is something I have never spoken about publicly. Um, you know, I, I've, I've spoken about it with my small little group of uh, friends and stuff, but never on my YouTube channel. And I'm actually glad that I did this because I felt good about it. And yeah, but anyway, I had took every gift that he had ever bought me. It was me and two other friends and I put it in a bar my barbecue grill and I doused that sucker in lighter fluid and I burned it. That was the day that I felt liberated. Literally liberated. I burned all those items and uh, pictures. I ripped him out of all my pictures. Like it was crazy. Crazy but amazing at the same time. Anyway, you guys. I hope that my experiences, my story, me sharing this was able to help someone even think about leaving that situation. So remember, you are loved. You are important. You are special. You sh Love should not hurt. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for hearing me out. I really feel like this was like a therapy session or something. <laughs> I mean, there's so much more. I could be here for hours going on and on and on with the stories of this psychopath. But um, we're going to cut it there. And uh, let me know down in the comments below if you guys want to share. If you've had similar um, experiences with your significant other. Let me know. Talk about it. Bring awareness to it. Let's share it. All right, guys. Thank you. As always, thank you so much to my BGA crew for your love and support. If you're watching this and you're new here, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell to be notified every time I upload or anytime I go live. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, besitos.